Hi there. This Sunday, I'm joined by a fashion legend. He was an early adopter of inclusivity in fashion. He is a very well-known stylist, a presenter, and a media personality. Everyone, please give a big welcome to Danny Lean. Hey, how are you? Welcome to Sunday Girl. At Thank last, you. at last I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how many attempts? <laughs> many, too many, too many. So listen, thank you for fitting me in. We're here at the end of a long day in your boutique here, Anbury's in the heart of Tralee. But I want you to take everyone way back to the beginning and what got you involved in the fashion industry? Oh my God, if I want to go way back, I suppose it really started, I suppose, with my grandmother. My grandmother was always fashionable. There was um, a store in Killarney called Hilliards, a department store, and everything we got came from there, our lines of Killarney. Much my own business and stuff like that started, I suppose, with my management training in Sainsbury's in England. Uh, this is going back, I can't believe I'm going to say it, over 30 years when I started there as a young trainee. I can't believe it Yes, and I think I'm only 21 <laughs> in my head. But I was a fresh food specialist. And now you're going to ask, what is that? I was in charge of, I worked my way up to be in charge of 20 delis within store. So I was covering from Southampton in the south up to Crawley, which is near Gatwick Airport, and all the ways over to Brighton and beyond. When something set in the seed, like Brighton was very vibrant in some of the markets, there were people making clothes. Paul Smith um, started down the market saying, really? yes, oh, and I had it. some of his yeah. original T-shirts, which a couple of years ago, I won't say a couple of years ago, when I was moving back to Ireland, I left them after me. When I moved back to Ireland, it was supermarkets for a while, and then I said I'd set up my own business. Really? And what age were you when you said... I'm going to set up my own business because that's a big decision. Again, I suppose with the entrepreneurs that were in my family from Lean's mm -hmm. Fitted Furniture, from mm -hmm. the Hired Tools and my grandmother's shop in B&B and the Muckras mm -hmm. Road, which was well famous okay. at its time. So you had it in your blood? I had it in my blood, okay. but it was a case of getting the right opportunity okay. at the right time okay. and that light bulb. And it happened in, of all places, a men's shop. Okay. I was sick at the time and I'd lost an awful lot of weight and I needed a suit mm -hmm. and there was a lady in the shop buying a suit for her husband or mm -hmm. guiding the husband to a suit okay. and she goes, aren't you lucky? Look at me, I can't find anything. And it would just set that seed and I kind of went, I'm going to get an outfit for that lady if it kills me. And about a year later, she was back in Sean's I had moved from Church Street, which is by the Ash Hotel now, at the back of that, to across the way from Sean uh, Hussey's shop. Mm -hmm. Same customer came in, spotted, we'd done the bigger sizes, and hey, presto. Actually, you saw in the market was that fashion did not dress a curvier woman, that it kind of literally went from size eight to size 14 and then after that it kind of lost its sense of fashion mm -hmm. and that woman was not serviced by high street retailers and indeed by high street boutiques no. and you went out there and you opened a boutique that catered for the fuller figure and I mean that was at that many years ago was that Danny? That is 20 next May, it'll be 24 years. Okay, well, you were practically two full decades ahead of your time. I, yeah. I suppose so. Yeah. If and again, I remember one of our earlier conversations, I set up upfront model management with my colleagues in, I think it was 2005, a million years ago. <laughs> and I re we, said, we had the office there down in mm -hmm. the square. Yeah. And one of the girls came in to me and said, Danny is on the phone for you. And I, I didn't know you at the time, Danny. And you wanted to hire some models and you said you wanted models that were a size 18 and 20. Mm -hmm. And we did not represent at that stage in, in our agency. We did not represent models with that size because there was no demand. demand. Yes. And, you know, that opened up my own eyes. I remember saying to the girls that day, I remember saying, OK, 
we have got to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, here we are in the fashion industry and all we're selling back to women is a reflection that is not themselves. People do feel self-conscious if they can't get the clothing they want. And I suppose I was there. I was the big child or teenager at one stage. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd have a photograph now before and after, but with a lot of them, I just destroyed. Yeah, but before we came on to record this, I said to Danny now, make sure you send me some pictures of you as a young one. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I don't have any, Orla. Yeah, I had a couple of years there even before I'd start to lose the weight. There are no photographs. And if there were, I'd destroy them. But it doesn't make any difference whether you're a man, woman or child. They're clothes to suit the person, the shape, their style, their lifestyle. Um, there's no reason anymore not to be stylish and comfortable yeah, in your clothes. And, you, know, you should take a bow for your leading role in that. Because I know I meet women at shows and they all talk about you. <laughs> 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 they all talk about you, Danny. Oh my God. And I think it's because you they would have had a special occasion coming up or you know, work occasion or anything mm. like that, or just everyday life. And they felt excluded and you made them feel included and made them look great. Yeah. That's the key. I, I think it is. And it, them trusting me as well mm -hmm. that when they're going out they're totally out of their comfort zone they might be going into something a bit more dressier than what they normally would wear and um, but it's a case of take a breath and go for it and like that you've got to try on everything never never judge a book by its cover or a dress or a trouser by its hanger right. always try, try, try on Everything. Especially when we have shops you can walk into. We're still around. We're not dinosaurs. Yeah, I As opened in. Anbury's in 1999. Well, I know then that's 23 years ago because my daughter was born in 1999. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Otherwise, my maths wouldn't be so hot on that. <laughs> so the last year of the last millennia, you opened Anbury's. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as you said, you opened in a back street mm -hmm. and then you have been kind of you know coming then you went to the ash street yeah and now you're here on the high street high street yeah, yeah. in between a national brand pamela scott's and an international brand vera moda yes and i think this street has become the most fashionable street in kerry if truly if not kerry brilliant retailer is that you've built relationships with your customer definitely you dress them throughout their throughout lives. their lifetime and it's i consider it as an honor to do it and that they come back to me again because it's down to trust and the communication with the customer that friendship yeah. it's more of will i say a community um a family um within our customers and who we're dealing with even during COVID, we adapted to online and doing videos People were phoning from all over the country, even England and even America, to get things sent out to them. That's great. So you that know. kind of also helped your business, I suppose, progress from in-person to online. And now, yes. of course, it's both. It's both. Yeah. It's a mixture yeah. of both. And once people get to know your labels mm -hmm. and trust the sizing, it, it's an added with the online. Of course it does, and you know them. I want to move beyond Dan Breeze because you, there's so many more dimensions <laughs> to Danny Lean. So I'm just going to try to fit in a few because we only kind of have less than 15 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to try to fit in. The first one is you are the fashion expert on Radio Kerry. Yes, I am. Yes. You're there for a good number of years. I'd say I'm going on eight, if not nine years now. Oh, well, up as well. Now there's cameras oh, in with the cameras, you and yeah. I'm and going out. It's a different, it's like. It's a huge production. For radio, you wouldn't think that it has mushroomed into what it has. Uh -huh. And again, a lot of that is vid visual um, when it comes to clothing. But with the radio, it's describing it. Close your eyes and imagine. But then again, that evening or the following evening, you can get onto the Facebook page and you can see it in real life. Yes, yeah, fantastic. It just brings also on RTE. Yes. Uh, what was the name of that program again? Frock Finders Frock was Finders. one of it. Yes. Oh my God, the reaction to that. And I'd that say was, it was down enormous. to you from um, a recommendation you gave. And, well, and they rang me just... and they said, who would you recommend? <laughs> I said, listen, this is really, really simple. I recommend Danny Lean. <laughs> it was an it will be brilliant. Yeah, it was an experience and a half. They were to do just a half an hour coming in and videoing. 
lads they followed me everywhere for the I'd whole say, summer yeah they yeah. had enough I think they couldn't believe their luck when they um, mentioned <laughs> <laughs> come here I couldn't believe one thing it was the Killarney races and that's what they opened their programme on just one of the stories I was hoping to get two ladies into the top 10 uh -huh. at the best dressed but I didn't realise there was a best dressed man that year they just introduced it do you know when you're so focused on getting the ladies in yeah, this is the place we need to be now, ladies, and mingle and the whole lot. The next thing, I made the top 10 men myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the ladies were you forgotten about. Won, Danny. The you ladies were won. forgotten about. <laughs> but Annie, look, in such a huge and varied career, do you have any kind of stand out or what are your proudest moments? I think one of them was Kerry Fashion Week, winning that special merit award that I did and coming from who the judges were. Um, Barbara Parr from The Independent, Dan O'Neill, that big international designer, Kerry mm -hmm. designer. Um, there was Helen Steele and there Melanie was Melanie Morris. And we're all still in touch along the way, um, which is brilliant. That was that was in the Europe Hotel. In the Europe, it? yeah, back in my well. old hometown, I Killarney. Well. I celebrate, yeah. That was a that brilliant is. night. And I suppose one of the biggest ones outside of fashion would be my wife Anne and our three beautiful children. They'll kill me for saying it, but they are my pride. Really? Yeah, they are. The boys are so... What are their names? Marcus, the oldest. Uh, then we have David and then we have Michael, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Far from a baby, but he's 15. A but they baby. Keep me, yeah, they <laughs> keep us on our feet. It's not a quiet house by any means. And I suppose they have that fashion bug I have. And if they don't like something I'm wearing, it's you're not going out on that, are you, Dad? Um, where other people stand back and keep their mouth shut, I'll get it from them straight away. <laughs> but I'm just so proud of everything that they do, um, whether it be school, their college or whatever, that I'm bursting with pride when it comes to them. And that's the other thing that people don't really see that much, but that's the, the other side, the family man. That's the beautiful know? human side of you, Dan. Yeah, yeah, it is that's just what, a bit And different. that human side of you is what made your whole business over the last almost 30 years so successful. Danny, thank, thank you. you so much. I've learned so much about you that I didn't know. And, and I thought sure you knew myself. I know, I've learned even so more. Fun. And thank you so much thank for you. Allowing me to meet up with you after all of these years yes. and to do this interview for Sunday Girl. Thanks, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the invitation too. And both of us wish you an amazing week. Bye for now.